Hello Sagittarius, welcome to your reading with me, Cindy. Sagittarius, we're going to look at emotional yeses and nos in this reading, and we're going to do it with the Doggy Wisdom Oracle deck. So, you know, they're pretty good at showing you their emotions right up front. <laughs> they're not really hiding anything. So we're going to try to get past anything that could be hidden here. So we're going to start with that deck, and then I'm going to move into my Teeny Tiny Everyday Witch deck. We're gonna see what you should release. This release is like a garbage can, recycling bin release. Just like put it away, don't bother with that anymore. And then we're gonna see what you should embrace, what you may not be aware of, and energy that's approaching you. We're gonna pull out one card first. It's gonna be kind of like the main energy for you in this reading. And then we're gonna develop the rest of it. Sagittarius, Sagittarius, Sagittarius. What do you have? Uncertainty. Uncertainty. So there's something going on around you that you're not sure how it's going to play out. Might be something to do with your future in some aspect of your life. You're uncertain of how this may unfold. There's a bit of a mystery. So let's see what else comes out here for you. So the first card is kind of good because it tells you, like, don't even focus on this anymore. Whatever that is. Put it to the curb. In the garbage, force that vulnerability. Wow. That's a hard one. <laughs> that is a hard one to ask anyone to do if they're not ready to do it. So don't be vulnerable here. Don't feel vulnerable. Um, hmm. I mean, everybody has walls. I want to say walls are something that kind of help protect people when they are feeling particularly vulnerable. So it is almost a little bit like the universe is guiding you to drop your walls a little bit somehow. But you know, you have to do that in your own time. So if it's not something that you feel comfortable doing right now, like putting vulnerability into the garbage can and at the curb, it's something to start contemplating and thinking about. So I would say perhaps why are there certain walls? Um, yeah, certain walls that you might have going on right now or why you may feel vulnerable in any given situation or in a particular situation and try to rationalize it a little bit for yourself. So maybe not get so caught up in the emotional aspect of feeling vulnerable. So what are you being asked to embrace? Oh, be positive. Everything's going to be okay. It's going to be very good. <laughs> That's so cute. So maybe because you're uncertain about like some part of your life, what the future could be. And maybe it feels like for some of you, a big black hole, a big black void, like you have no idea where this is going to go for your life or there's no indications about where something could go in your life. So it just leaves you feeling like kind of vulnerable. I don't know how to prepare for this. I don't know who I should be or what part of myself I should really utilize to guide me through here because I don't know where I'm going. So yeah, that makes sense. But so, okay, try not to feel vulnerable about whatever position you feel that you're in, but just, just try to stay positive. Try to stay positive. Be positive. Everything will be okay. This too shall pass, I'm hearing. So this too shall pass. So whatever it is that you're involved in right now for yourself that's got you in some level of uncertainty, this too shall pass. Hidden factors that you were unaware of. Laziness. That's interesting. It could be a state that you're slipping into. It's, you know, it can be more comfortable to stay in more of a negative mindset, feel kind of vulnerable about your situation if that's been going on for a while, right? Like it just, anything that we do can become a habit over time. So you may be, um, in terms of your situation, you may have more control over your life and where it's going than you realize. Like there might be some parts of your life that you know for certain. Cindy, I don't have any control in this. So try not to focus on that, right? Like what is a wise man? What is that quote? There's someone who, or God give me the strength to change the things that I can and the wisdom to know what I can't, right? Like it's kind of like that energy. So if you're focused on the parts of your life that, you know, I don't know how to change this. I don't see a road forward for me. Mm, too much focus on that might just leave you feeling like, well, there's no reason to plan for the future with this laziness. So this could, I could see how all of this could start to kind of snowball 
into sort of a pattern. But so energy that is approaching you. Pride. Oh, that's interesting. I feel like it's possibly seeing yourself and your path in a different way. I mean, it could be someone. I get with this card, because it's so specific, it feels like Leo energy. So it could be someone that you know specifically who is a Leo or is um, taking on Leo traits at the time when they approach you. But it definitely feels like you seeing yourself differently, seeing your path differently, and kind of feeling, recognizing where you've made accomplishments and how you are accomplishing things in your life, even if there's something that is like a big dark tunnel and you're like, I don't know. Guilt, enthusiasm, determination. Interesting underlines. Determination. Don't feel guilty either. <laughs> like, because sometimes we can. Like, if we've been stuck in a funk for a while, or we felt like we can't move forward because of one area of our life, and then we put other areas of our life on hold as well. Once we kind of become aware of maybe the pattern and something that we were doing, we can start to feel guilty about it. Like, why did I do that to myself? Or why didn't I take these opportunities? When So just approach things in a new way. Like, be enthusiastic and be determined to focus on the things that you can change in your life. That you know you do have control of in your life. So let's see what the little teeny tiny tarot has to say about all this stuff. So, so far your emotional nose. Well, really, I think it is to um, try not to focus on where you feel vulnerable. Let that look after itself in a way. Don't feel guilty about anything that you feel like is a more negative outlet for yourself that you've been focused on and your yeses your emotional yeses are to really recognize where you have succeeded in life and that you do have the potential to change your outcome here with the be positive because if you stay in a negative funk if really good things start coming towards you this you could end up with sort of the four of cups where you don't recognize it as something good because well everything fails anyways or everything doesn't work out anyways i don't know where that's gonna go so uncertainty, the uncertainty card. The eight of pentacles. Mm. So some of you might not be sure where you're going in terms of your work. Some of you, you know what I wanted to say before this eight of pentacles card came out, I thought it was interesting as I was looking at this, I thought it's curious that there's two dogs in this image because well, even the vulnerability, we'll look at that as well. So these could be connected to people around you, some of these feelings or um, confusions. Because I saw these two here, and before this card came out, I thought to myself, okay, there's two there in the vulnerability card. The thing that came in immediately was that, or the uncertainty. Um, well, maybe you're feeling vulnerable because you're uncertain about something, but the uncertainty of be maybe between you and someone else um this could be like a boss or it could be a work colleague now i'm saying that because you have the eight of pentacles it has a lot to do with your work um so there could be something that you're feeling uncertain about in that it, it just felt like to me that there's something to do with the relationship because there's two dogs there and one is laying down and one is sitting up so almost maybe there's something going on where it seems like when you're feeling like you want to invest in some aspect of a relationship, might be work or at least put the work in. Um, the other one is kind of laying down on it. And then when you feel like, eh, I'm not going to do this today, then that one is sitting up and getting ready. to. So it's uncertain about, well, where is this going? So it could have something to do with work for you or a relationship that you have with someone in your work environment. You're uncertain about that. The vulnerability. This is the garbage can. Put it to the curb. Wow, the six of swords and the nine of swords. I do feel like the vulnerability gets you into your headspace too much. It gets you thinking, overthinking things. You know, something's coming in for me right now that is a really important thing to consider sometimes when we're dealing with people. If we deal with someone who um, 
could seem like a little bit uh, put off by us in a particular situation or, you know, the interaction didn't seem very positive. A lot of times it has nothing to do with you. It could very well be something that's going on in that person's life. And it's funny, I had a couple instances, one much more profound than the other this week with someone. And I thought, oh, I feel like maybe, I don't know, that I did some sort of social faux pas with them in terms, and I thought, well, there was, no, I tried this and I tried that. <laughs> um, I kind of sort of had to interrupt someone to convey some information very quickly. But then after the interaction, I felt sort of like, the person was perturbed but then I looked at it and I realized they were already dealing with something at the time and even though it was really important that I conveyed information to them I kind of walked away feeling like I feel like I did something wrong and that I shouldn't have done it that way but then I really I tried to step out of that and think to myself I don't know what's going on in that person's life right now right so I don't know why that's coming up for you so that could be something right like this nine of swords the six of swords don't get in your head about this because a lot of times we have no idea what is going on in someone else's life. Um, even like if you're walking down the street and someone comes towards you and you're in a neighborhood where people say hi and say hi or good morning and they just kind of, you know, your initial reaction might be, well, that person's kind of snobby or that person doesn't. They could just be going through something really, really difficult and they don't have anything to give right now. So, yeah, you know, it's just interesting. What are you being asked to embrace? Be positive here. Be positive. The Knight of Pentacles and the Two of Wands. You are, okay. You are guiding yourself directly toward something that you're hoping for. Something that you're hoping for in your future. Something that you're projecting. So you're projecting something for yourself in the future. And kind of trying to be positive about this is important because the energy that you put into this manifestation is the energy that you will find yourself in when you meet that manifestation. But it is a process here, just step by step. It does have to, all things have to be considered along the way. So you can't rush into it with the Knight of Pentacles. Maybe you're feeling like it's taken a long time to get to whatever this dream is, this thing that you're hoping for, but stay positive. <laughs> I was thinking, that's my blood type, be positive. I was thinking, be positive, be positive. That's your motto in life, be positive. Hidden factors that you're unaware of. Laziness. Um, What is this card doing? When did that flip? Why do I feel like that? I don't know, the Four of Swords. Well, that would go really well with laziness. Um, That's funny. And judgment. You know, you could be feeling like just... There's not a lot going on. And it might feel like things are really standing still with the Four of Swords. You have a lot of time to um, to rest, to reflect, to meditate. And that can start to get you in kind of a lazy mindset. But with judgment here, I just feel like um, what you're unaware of, there's going to be a shift. Something is about to take off for you with judgment. Do you want to see if I can figure out what that is? Well, let's see. It might have something to do with pride. Let's see pride first, and then we'll look at pride. This is the energy that is approaching Sagittarius. Pride. The King of Cups and the Six of Pentacles. I'm feeling, I still kind of got that feeling like it's some someone outside of you. And the King of Cups and the Six of Pentacles. So um, somebody who has a lot of um, maturity, a lot of emotional maturity here, they may have really deep feelings about you or something that's going on between you and them. The Six of Pentacles, I think there's like a desire to, to either give, um, to balance something out. To really balance something out in pentacles a very practical way okay so now let's go to see what the judgment is maybe it's the energy of this coming towards you what is this judgment for sagittarius what is the judgment for sagittarius oh i think something did flip in there this is judgment for sagittarius so what flipped first was the seven of wands there's your wall oh and the two of cups wow Oh, 
see, I told y'all. There's, um, yeah, like, don't end up in the Four of Cups. Like, try to be positive. Try to look at, so even if there's something in your life that's very, very heavy or very, very negative, try to only, like, focus on that when you're being asked to focus on it. Like, if there's something that you need to directly deal with in that of your life, then be there presently with it, obviously. Like, don't just discount your problems and pretend they don't exist. But when you're not being asked to focus on that, don't. Don't focus on it. Try to take a look at the things in your life that you um, are appreciative of. Like, focus on that. It definitely is. Um, yeah, it's almost a mindful practice about the things that you are grateful for in your life. And I do want to say, if there is something negative that you're dealing with in your life that makes you feel uncertain or vulnerable, the minute you come out of it, like the minute you're not being asked to engage with whatever that is, make a concerted effort to, okay, what, what are the good things around me? Like, don't overthink what you just went through, whatever that could be. So there's, yeah, because there's this wall here that you don't want it to be impenetrable, right? You want, for the two of cups, it's a very nice energy that's, emotional harmony emotional harmony right like something that you're aware of maybe you're even feeling like i don't want to invest in <laughs> it's better to invest in emotional harmony than it is to invest in emotional disharmony so let's look at this i read from left to right so guilt maybe you feel guilty about not being enthusiastic and determined <laughs> because you do have the laziness the Eight of Swords, the star. Maybe you feel like you're, you could even be holding yourself back from some of your own dreams or you may be thinking about decisions that you've made in the past in your life and thinking like where you are now and thinking, you know what? I don't feel like those decisions led me to um, where I really feel like I wanna be in my life, but that's okay because at the time those decisions made sense and you're changing and shifting obviously enthusiasm feeling guilty that you were not moving towards your dreams or oh, the king of wands there it is well that's very enthusiastic energy that's like a go-getter that's going after what it is that you want and determination i'm hearing ride the storm so whatever that is well, and it's funny, right? Because this came out, the strength card, and she is, she's keeping that tornado at bay. So you are determined here. I feel like to manifest beyond some sort of conflict with the five of wands, perhaps some sort of competing energies. Yeah, you got to balance something. There's like a storm in the background. And maybe it has something to do with what this uncertainty and vulnerability is that you're feeling. So your determination to do that. Or maybe you feel like you haven't balanced it thus far and that's where the guilt comes from. So you have the chair, you have the charity, isn't that funny? You have this chariot, you have the charity. You have the chariot the Ace of Cups the, and the Eight of Wands. So, wow. Really trying to decide what direction can you take here. Take the direction it feels like it, at least it continues to feed you into feeling positive here. Because that's that's the biggest thing you're being asked to embrace is to, to feed into, recognize, focus on the parts of your life that you feel positive about. So that's the direction to take. And the Ace of Cups into the Eight of Wands. That is almost taking communication or movement into the storm. But taking it with a big cup of emotional balance with the Ace of Cups. So, Sagittarius, very interesting reading. I'm going to go to your extended. In the extended, we're going to hear from your inner child. That's interesting because there was a lot of uh, deep, deep, deep healing energy 
I did on my channel with Sagittarius months and months ago, maybe even been a year at this point. It just seemed like, particularly in the extended. So I love to go and see what's going on with y'all. Um, yeah, so we're going to have your inner child talking to you about things, your deeper soul. Until next time, Sagittarius, do be gentle with yourselves. Bye.